Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this meeting of the Council of the Town of Oakville. Um, I invite the public to uh, rise and uh, join Council in singing O Canada. Please be seated. God grant us understanding and patience that justice, truth, and honesty may be evident in our decisions. Make us mindful of the needs of the people throughout the town of Oakville. Help us govern with the wider community in mind, and so create in us a desire for progress and responsible action. We ask this in your name, amen. We'll now have our moment of silent reflection. Thank you, everyone. Uh, Madam Clerk, I understand we have regrets this evening. Yes, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mayor, from Councillor Lapworth. Thank you. Councillor, are there any declarations of pecuniary interest? Councillor Noll? Your Worship, I wish to declare a conflict or a, a pecuniary interest in the uh, item on the administrative services agenda with respect to uh, the budgets of the uh, business improvement areas, specifically with the Kerr Street BIA. I am a member through my um, privately owned business on, in that area. Thank you, Councillor. Council, um, how would you like to deal with your minutes from April 15th and April 29th? Councillor Duddick moves adoption of the minutes. A second from Councillor Kahn. All in favor? Opposed, if any. The minutes are adopted. We have no uh, public presentations for this agenda, but we do have a declaration, a, a delegation listed, but I don't see the party. Madam Clerk, do you want to call the delegation? The delegation listed this evening is Pierre Goulart, pedestrian, regarding pedestrian safety improvement opportunities, River Oaks Boulevard East, which was item five of the community services meeting of April 30th. Mr. Girard? Well, I, I know the gentleman, he's not here. All right, council. Uh, um, pardon me, the uh, gentleman uh, realizes this issue would be looked after and so decided not to. Councilor, I'm evening. sorry? <clears throat> the, the gentleman uh, realized this issue was dealt with uh, properly oh, and okay. uh, was on his way. Yeah, we could take that view. Then, uh, Council, um, I, that brings us on our agenda to our standing committee reports. Uh, uh, since we are going to, uh, well, let's turn to community services. Councillor Duddock. Could I separate item six, please? Yes. And would you um, uh, move the balance? Yes. And a seconder? Councillor Kahn, all in favor? Opposed, if any? Councillor Duddock. Um, through you, Your Worship, um, I was wondering if the mover of the motion um, would uh, consider um, directing or, um, what shall I say, sending this, referring, thank you, Councillor, referring this to the Budget Committee, given that it has financial impacts okay. and that uh, it should be duly dealt with at that level. Is that agreeable to you that would... Okay, Councillor Duddy, I have a question to staff so that we make sure we do it uh, properly. Um, my question to staff would be, if in fact we do refer it to the Budget Committee, 
and a decision is made in December of this year, would that still be enforced for 2014? Because uh, just because of contractual issues when going out to tender, how would we handle this? Would we have two uh, alternate tenders, perhaps? I think you mean 13, right, sir? Well, it's a 2014 budget, so it may not even begin until, you know, at the worst, January 14, I'm thinking. But I want to make sure when we go out for tender, because I think we do a tender a little bit in, in 2013 and a little bit in 2014. So how, how would we work this? All right. Um, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, in this particular case, with the type of uh, standard that you're looking at or level of service you're looking at modifying, um, we do not require any additional equipment or any more equipment than we already deploy. The issue we'll be dealing with is deploying it more frequently. That's how we would deal with this particular level of service. So immediately upon Council's approval of a new level of service, we would have all the resources necessary to implement that new level of service by deploying the uh, equipment that we already have at hand. With, with that uh, answer, then I'm willing to, uh, uh, I, I like a good, good idea what Councillor Duddick is doing. Thank okay, you. Okay, so Councillor Duddick is moving referral to the Budget Committee and seconded by Councillor Elgar. Yes. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed, if any? Carried. Administrative Services Committee report. Councillor Johnston. Councillor Johnston moves the Administrative Services Committee report. Less, well, he'll move all of it, but we'll separate uh, Councillor Knowles' piece, the BIA budget, the Kerr Street BIA budget. So we'll first vote. So Councillor Johnson's moving it all. I need a seconder for all of it. Councillor Duddick, now we're ready. So Councillor Knoll, uh, on this vote, we'll be voting everything except the Kerr Street BIA, and you're free to vote. All those in favor? Opposed, if any? That carries. And now we'll be voting on just the Kerr Street BIA, and Councillor Knoll will not take part in this vote. All in, f all in, f all in favor? Opposed, if any, and that carries. Congratulations to the Kerr Street BIA. Good to see you, Richard. Um, and that takes care of your standing committee reports. Now, Council, this brings us to a fairly uh, pleasant uh, bit of duty. Um, we're going to hear from uh, Jane Cordemanche to begin with on the 2013 Citizen Satisfaction Survey, as I'm going to call it. And I, I believe that uh, this is a happy occasion because I think this is our best report card yet. Uh, Ms. Cordemash, we're all ears. Thank you very much. We, we do, get the we're very out. pleased about doing well, but we are also relentlessly focused on where we can improve. So we're looking forward to all that you have. Okay. Um, this is, as you know, we were here just at last uh, council meeting doing the results of our uh, employee survey. This is our citizen survey, and it's another key component of our overall uh, performance management program. The third component is through the budget process with our key performance indicators. So this is actually our sixth citizen survey uh, going back to 2001. So we have a, a, an ability to really track our results over, uh, over a decade now. Um, so the survey is important because it obviously it, it provides input to council in determining strategic priorities. It can help with budget decisions and it also allows town staff to track their progress and measure results. Uh, our survey is undertaken by uh, Polara Strategic uh, Research. Okay, thank you. Uh, I have uh, the pleasure of introducing Craig Warden who is the Senior Vice President of Public Affairs and Catherine Valiquette our senior research consultant, and you may remember Craig and Catherine from uh, previous presentations to Council. They'll be able to present the results of the survey and respond to your questions. Uh, this is the third consecutive survey that uh, Pallara has conducted on behalf of the town, and uh, Pallara does bring industry-leading research, research methodologies and analytical techniques that give us different insights mm -hmm. into the data. So it's not just about the numbers that they're presenting, it's about analyzing the results and helping us to better understand our residents' perspectives. So I'm going to invite uh, Craig and Catherine to come up. Thanks. Okay. Thank you very much for having us here today. Uh, my name is Craig Warden. I'll take you through uh, the introduction to the survey and some of the key findings, and then Catherine Valakat, my colleague, will take you through the, the nitty-gritty of, uh, of these happy findings. So thank you for... There we go. 
having us here today. It's always a pleasure. Uh, it's not often that we get to tell happy stories, uh, and this is a, a largely happy story. So what we'll do is we'll take you through the key findings, um, then through the various results, first some context in terms of what the big issues are, um, then satisfaction scores, um, then some priority rankings. What did we do? Uh, we did a telephone survey, as we always do, of 800 residents over the course of February 22nd through to March 7th. Um, as you can see, we always have a, a quota regime in place so that we ensure that we get statistically reliable and comparable results amongst each of the wards. And then we use standard statistical weighting techniques to make sure that the final sample accurately represents the gender, age, and region distribution of your actual population here in Oakville. Um, so overall, this is a very good news story. I believe when you're here in 2011, I think there's a good chance that I said, you, you know, very good results. You can't expect to do much better, but you did. Uh, so two years later, right now you have 87% satisfaction rating. That's 5% higher than two years ago. Um, nine points higher than four years ago. Um, and so you're back to where you were before the financial crisis. So in 2007, you had 87. And then we saw what we saw in a lot of municipalities and every government, a drop in satisfaction. And you've gone up nine points uh, over the past four years. So these are really strong results. They're amongst the strongest results uh, that we've seen doing municipal research. Um, if you were to sort of look at all the surveys that are out there conducted for municipalities across Ontario, they would, everybody asked the questions in different ways, but they'd average out, I'd say, at around 75%, um, and you're at 87. Um, there are other municipalities in the 905 who are similarly happy, but I would say we can easily say that you're amongst uh, some of the highest scores we've seen uh, for a municipality in terms of their overall satisfaction. Um, there are no, as we say here, no acute pressure points or no lightning rods of discontent in this community. Um, we can sometimes see that pop up even when there is a good score. Uh, we can sometimes see a high figure that sort of says roads. We need to fix the roads. I'm really happy, but the roads, we don't see that here. The numbers are all very low. There's no lightning rod of discontent. Um, what's also very interesting is that each of your specific services gets a very high score, in some cases higher than your overall score. So some, score, some of your specific services actually score in the 90s. Um, so again, very high, very positive, uh, difficult to do better, but you've proven us wrong in the past. So we'll see what happens in the future. Um, we see this uh, in terms of priorities. Once again, your priority is controlling the rate and type of growth. This is a standard top priority for any uh, municipality in the 905 belt around Toronto. That, that is the top concern in every municipality, and that is sort of managing growth uh, as best you can. Uh, so we're not surprised to see that. Uh, cost sensitivity still remains uh, a concern and probably always will. Uh, that's, again, another top issue uh, to keep an eye on within the, the 905 belt. That's a favorite concern. Uh, but is not what we saw back in 2011 when cost of living uh, concerns really dominated, I would say, every government's agenda. Uh, it, was, it was a source of anger for a lot of uh, residents. Um, it, that's sort of been muted, but it's still there and keep something to keep an eye on. Um, and we do see a positive response to the, uh, the potential of doing more online uh, via the town's website. Um, and we do see strong usage of the website. And, and so we're not surprised then to see that people are interested in actually doing uh, their transactions with the, with the town through that website. Uh, now I'll invite Catherine up to take you through uh, the specific detailed findings. Through your worship, uh, thank you again, everyone, for having us here to present these uh, delightful findings that we've had here. Um, so let's go through uh, some of the nitty gritty. So starting right off the top with the most important issue in the, the town of Oakville. Uh, what we see here is once again our top issue is urban, urban sprawl and development. That is down slightly uh, from the 2011 results, um, but it's not a statistically significant difference. Also ranking among our top five issues were taxes, 
population increase, traffic and congestion, and education issues. So you see development, population increase, traffic congestion, those kinds of growth issues resonating um, even as we start off the survey. We look at comparative livability. Um, we ask whether residents feel that uh, livability in the town of Oakville is better, the same as, um, or worse than other parts of the GTA. You see the overwhelming response here is once again uh, that your residents feel that uh, the town of Oakville is more livable than other areas in the GTA. That's 85%. We have a further 10% who say that it's about the same. Uh, so you're looking at uh, a, a near absolute majority there. Uh, we look at some of the, the qualities that make Oakville livable. And this is an open-ended question where we take the responses uh, in, in the uh, citizens' own words here. Um, and then we group them. So our, our categories here, small town family atmosphere at 28%, uh, clean, visually attractive at 20%, parks, recreation, sports teams, that's come up slightly to 27%. Uh, at 16%, we have good government and services. And then down slightly, we have safe, low crime. Uh, these are all positive attributes that, that citizens have listed. There we go. Um, so the, on the flip side of this, we ask a follow-up question. So what is the greatest challenge uh, to Oakville being the most livable town in Canada? Uh, right off the top, we have development issues, so growth, development, uh, that sort of thing, that's up at 17%. That has increased slightly from the previous uh, 2011 survey. Cost of living uh, has climbed bit by bit from 5% in 2007, it's now at 11%. Uh, we also have at 10% affordable housing, uh, and that's come up from the previous survey in 2011. Okay, so moving right along to satisfaction. Uh, Craig alluded that your overall satisfaction score had climbed uh, and is now back up to um, pre-economic crisis uh, numbers. We are now at 87%. Um, we have 30% who say that they are very satisfied. That's in that strong box. Uh, and very few, only 3%, who say that they are very dissatisfied. As you can see, um, we have upticked in terms of overall satisfaction with government performance. Uh, dissatisfaction is, is down from the previous year uh, and, and almost equal measure. Uh, now we look at uh, the overall satisfaction with specific programs and services. Your top five here, feeling of belonging and being safe at 96%, parks and green spaces at 94%, quality of buildings and overall appearance at 91 and both 90% public library services and recreation fields and facilities. Uh, this by and large reflects the issues that we've already gone over to date, uh, but something that I would like to draw your attention to is our dark blue bar. Uh, where we see that uh, more than half and, and upwards of uh, 7 in 10 uh, say that they're very satisfied with these town aspects. Uh, this is what we consider to be very, very strong scores. Uh, and obviously you can see your overall ratings are in the 90s and, and this is very positive. You'll forgive me, my page down button is a little finicky tonight. All right, so our second tier of services, we have the effort the town makes to protect the heritage, harbors and waterfront areas, amount of information provided to residents, responding to community needs, and recreation programs all come with your second tier here, ranging with overall satisfaction scores from 85 to 90% overall. We've seen only marginal change um, from the previous survey in 2011. And again, with respect to protecting heritage, waterfront areas, and recreation programs, your strong satisfaction is in excess of, of 50%. So again, very, very strong, solid scores there. And where we expect to see a softer score with respect to responding to community needs, which reflects the number of, of your residents who contact the town for any purpose, uh, we do see a bit of a softer score there. Still very positive overall at 86% satisfied.
<laughs> okay, uh, our third tier here, arts and cultural programs and venues. The effort that the town makes to protect the environment, Oakville's emergency services, town roads and sidewalks, opportunities for public involvement. Again, between three quarters and 85% here say that they are satisfied overall. Oakville's emergency services, something that very few people use but many do think highly of, uh, ranks up there. 53% are, are very satisfied with that particular rating. Okay, now where we saw the, the greatest shifts from the 2011 survey uh, were in that, that final tier of services that we tested. Managing tax dollars, provision of municipal parking, winter road and sidewalk maintenance, and public transit. <coughs> Managing your tax dollars, this is something there where we expect to see uh, a lower score um, in terms of satisfaction with government performance. Um, public transit, again, this number we see 18% who say that they don't know enough to provide a rating. This uh, reflects the number of people who use public transit in Oakville. Winter road and sidewalk maintenance, you see that we've gone down 10 points um, from the, the previous survey. In 2011, when we conducted the survey, people were walking around in shorts. In 2013, when we conducted the survey, they were shoveling themselves out of their driveways. So we do see uh, some understandable differences here. This is where we expect to have uh, some of the movement. So now we move on uh, to where your, your citizens are, are getting information. Uh, what we see is that nearly two-thirds are getting their information from the Town of Oakville's website. 12% uh, say that they are getting it from local newspapers. Town brochures and publications and other sources on the internet both come in at 5%. Let's talk Oakville. Um, I know it has a, a two-point uh, group there. Um, this is uh, this has increased marginally, um, up, up two points. It was barely mentioned in 2011 and is now on the radar. Craig alluded earlier that uh, there is an uh, openness to using new online services through the town's website. These are your numbers. 68% uh, say that they are very likely uh, to use the town website for program registration. Slightly fewer, 62%, say that they would use it for online bill payment. Uh, and then we have moderate uh, uptake or projected uptake for reading an e-newsletter, uh, requesting a permit, or booking a facility. Uh, these last two, requesting permits and booking facilities, also reflect uh, the number of people who would use such services uh, as they do currently. We also looked at familiarity with idea forum and the uptake in usage there. Um, this looks like a very small number, uh, but consider your entire population uh, and, and consider the, the uh, full uptake of it here. We have 7% who say that they are familiar with idea forum and of that seven, 8% say that they are, are members of idea forum. This is what we would consider to be a, a baseline number. Uh, and something that we would measure over time uh, and, and expect uh, awareness and, and uptake to increase as this kind of service becomes more popular. So in terms of contacting the town, um, we have 34% who say that they have contacted the town by telephone and for their 10% by uh, walking in the door and contacting you in person. Another 6% by email, another 8% through your website. Four in 10 say that they have not contacted the town in the last two years. We asked some follow-up questions among those who have contacted the town. Uh, why did they contact the town? This is in their own words. So did they contact the town to request a service, to inquire about town programs, file a complaint, pay a bill, inquire about a permit or obtain a license? perform transaction, to book or inquire about facilities. We see the, the top response there is, is to request a service. They had a question for you. Um, and then to inquire about town programs at 17% or to file a complaint at an equal 17. Overall, when we consider satisfaction with their most recent uh, interaction with the town, we're now at 84% satisfied overall, more than half uh, so a very strong level of satisfaction here, 55% to say that they were very satisfied with their most recent contact with the town. <coughs> okay. 
Overall, we see some very strong satisfaction ratings with person-to-person uh, -person contact here. Town employees are respectful, services are accessible, employees are knowledgeable, service was provided in a timely manner, uh, and can easily find the right staff to deal with. More than 8 in 10 and upwards of 95% agree with each of these statements. Overall, in our strong, uh, strongly agree bars, our dark blue bars, we see that 7 in 10 feel that your employees very much so are, are respectful, and 62% say that service was provided in a timely manner. All right, so now we get on, on to the priorities and planning portion of, uh, of our survey. And what we did here, uh, as you'll see in the coming slides, is we executed, uh, similar to what we've done in previous surveys, a pairwise testing exercise. And that's where we took um, a series of services and listed off one, for example, controlling the rate and type of growth, and uh, compared it to another specific ser um, service or, or program or policy priority, such as uh, protecting the environment. And we asked one and the other and asked respondents to choose which one of those two priorities was most important to them and listed off a series of those priorities to ascertain what was the top priority overall in the town of Oakville. This slide reflects the number of times each priority was, was selected by our respondents out of the number of times it was asked. 67% of the time we inquired about controlling growth in the town. Uh, respondents indicated that this was the more important priority. 54% selected natural environment. 46% of the time governing and managing the town came out on top. 45% of the time ease of traveling. And then less often recreation and cultural programs and community facilities at 40 and 39% of the time that they were shown respectively. Okay, so um, we mentioned earlier that controlling the rate and type of growth was the top priority overall in the town of Oakville. As you saw on the previous slide, it was selected two-thirds of the time that it was shown. This is reflected in the one-by-one -one results comparison here. When it was shown against Oakville's natural environment, 60% uh, chose controlling the rate and type of growth. When shown against governing and managing the town, 69% chose controlling the rate and type of growth. Um, those that kind of landed in the, in the middle, um, so community facilities and attractions, for example, we had a split. When it was shown, uh, for example, with recreation and cultural programs, 50% chose community facilities and attractions. With respect to ease of traveling, uh, when shown against community facilities and attractions, more than half selected ease of traveling. Um, but with respect to other priorities, such as Oakville's natural environment, controlling the rate and type of growth, and recreation and cultural programs, fewer selected ease of traveling than each of those. All right. So, uh, moving right along, we, del we delved uh, further into each of the policy priorities that we tested. Uh, and in terms of controlling the rate and type of growth, our top priority here was protecting the character of existing neighborhoods at 28%, followed by ensuring the town implements sustainable development standards at 21%, uh, and then right down at the bottom, supporting high-density housing around transit hubs. That came in at 3%. Technology does not like me today. <laughs> okay. Oakville's natural environment. Our top priority here, protecting and maintaining parks, trails, and green spaces, again, at 28%. Followed by, at 20%, maintaining the overall cleanliness of the community. Uh, and then, similarly, with improving the town's air quality, 
uh, protecting trees from invasive pests and reducing energy consumption, increasing energy efficiency. That one came in at 14%. All right, in terms of uh, top priority for Oakville's community facilities and attractions, we basically had a three-way tie uh, with just under one quarter selecting building new youth centers for youth at risk, building new outdoor facilities, uh, and creating more access to the waterfront. 24 and 23 percent each selected those. The Building new facilities, which is now at 20%, had 15% of, of the share when we inquired about this in 2011. Uh, building new youth centers for youth at risk, that is uh, virtually unchanged. It was 26%, it is now at 24% compared to what we uh, determined in 2011. In terms of ease of traveling in the town of Oakville, uh, we see a clear top priority here with 29% selecting adding and widening roads and bridges. Uh, this is the first time that we've asked this specific point here. Uh, comparatively, when we look at creating year-round paths for walking and cycling, increasing traffic calming, and increasing the number of transit routes, those each come in at just under 20% each, 18, 18, and 17%. Increasing the number of transit routes, uh, interestingly, um, is unchanged from the previous year. Um, creating year-round paths for walking and cycling, that one is down three points from the previous uh, survey in 2011. It was 21, and now it is at 18. In terms of Oakville's recreation and cultural programs, um, even more than in 2011, when it was 56%, now 62% say that keeping the cost to participate in programs affordable is the top priority in terms of Oakville's recreation and cultural programs. Um, we noticed earlier that uh, mentions of, of taxes and, and cost of living as, as the top issue in Oakville had decreased from the 2011 survey. Uh, this is counterbalanced by this finding here where we have an increasing number saying that keeping the cost to participate in programs affordable is important to them. In terms of governing and managing the town, uh, we have two priorities that came up top, ensuring cost efficiency of programs and services, and ensuring open, transparent, and accountable government, both ranked at 32 and 31 percent, respectively. Uh, ensuring open, transparent, and accountable government uh, was at 40 percent last year. It was the top priority in, in 2011. Uh, and in 2011, ensuring the cost efficiency um, was effectively uh, the same uh, at 30 percent. We then ask a uh, pick and choose question. Would you rather um, cut taxes even if it means cuts to programs and services or would you rather maintain or augment programs and services even if it means a tax increase? What we're seeing here is that uh, six in 10 prefer to maintain or increase services, even if it means uh, the taxes or user fees must increase. What we see here is, is generally there is a preference for maintaining rather than adding new services, but the two combined for 62% of preference. For those who say that they would like to maintain or add new services, they are then asked to follow up. Would you prefer to increase property taxes to pay for this or increases to user fees? What we see here is a clear preference, 75% prefer increases to user fees. In terms of uh, preferences for the public transit system, currently we have 29% uh, say that they are regular users of transit. Uh, this is relatively stable from two, 2011. We have half of residents who say that they never use Oakville's public transit. When we asked uh, the follow-up question to this uh, among everybody, how would you prefer to fund improvements to the public transit system? Uh, half say that they would prefer an increase to transit fares. 12% uh, indicate an increase to property taxes. And 25%, one in four, say that they would prefer an increase to parking rates. 
Regular users of public transit uh, still prefer increases to property taxes or parking rates over transit fares, but just by a slim margin. Uh, so property taxes, transit fares, when we combine those two results, that's 46% by comparison to increasing transit fares, 42% select that option. That's just among your regular transit users. Um, we had a specific question on Oakville galleries this year. Uh, we looked at those who were familiar with the Oakville galleries, uh, and then of those who had at least heard the name Oakville galleries, uh, when was the last time that they visited? What we're looking at is in the last few months, what we call recent visitors, 5% say that they have been to the Oakville galleries. Other visitors, so more than a few months ago, we have just under half, 49% say that they've been to the Oakville Galleries. Um, what is not surprising to us here is that those who are familiar with the Oakville Galleries, your recent visitors uh, are at 15% as compared to 5% among your general population. Those not familiar, uh, your non-visitors are at 63% compared to your general population, 46%. That brings us to the end of the survey. Um, be happy to take questions. Thank you very much. It's very enlightening. Uh, you, you do have questions. Uh, I'll lead off with uh, Councillor Elgar and then Councillor Robinson. Thank, thank you very much for, this, for the survey. It's appreciated. Now, you said we, we got to get into the specifics and detail. And at the very beginning, I noticed you, you split everything by ward one through six. And I think that ward four was like uh, six or seven points in deviation. That was all that would be. When will we see the results by ward? I think in other years we always used to get all the results by ward and we could take a look at our specific areas. I'd like to know when that would be available. Yeah, I, I believe town staff can, can forward that to you at any time. So it is readily available at this yes. point. Yep. Yep. Now, there was one question you asked, responding to community needs back early in your presentation, we were sitting at 28%. Mm -hmm. Can you dig a little deeper and tell me um, what, what specifically you were targeting there? Because it very satisfied, I think, it was 28% on that one. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it is, that is the phrase that we tested. So, it, it, you know, we're just testing their perception of community needs being addressed by the local government. So mm -hmm. that is one that's going to be difficult to get an intense score. It's always difficult for governments to get a rave review on something when it's th that specific to government responding. Um, so that's why we say we, we're not surprised that the intensity isn't there, um, although 28% isn't something to, to sneeze at. That's a, that's a pretty good score for that. But did you drill down to get any more specifics of what they were actually referring to, responding no. to community needs? Do we have any idea? No, like it's, it's a general statement. That's where we're, we're just testing that. We don't follow up with a follow-up question there doesn't really help us very much, I guess, does it? Well, it tells you what the general perception of the government is in terms of responding to community needs. Like, I, I, yeah, not to waste anybody's time, but I'm just thinking it'd be, maybe going forward, it'd be good if we fig have some kind of a bit of a template to drill down to find out specifically, at least in Oakville, yeah, sure. uh, what, what that would be. Yeah, okay. we could do that in follow-up surveys. We okay. can do, Thank we you can very do much. That. Th thank you, Worship. I'm just curious as to how your surveys may unfold when you're dealing with the public. Uh, whenever you ask a constituent something about a political venue, it's not uncommon for them to have something negative to say, but do you, do you find that as you progress through the conversation that they frequently become stronger and change their opinion and realize what it is that you've eventually given us is the appropriate answer. Mm, I, I would say. Do you understand the question? Yeah, you're yeah. wondering if the, if their opinions change as they go through. Yes, when you. One of the important things to do when you design a survey is to, it's an inverted pyramid. So you start off very general, very top of mind. We get their opinions in their own words, so that we're certain that when we look at the data set, we analyze the responses, that we're not informing them and getting responses that are skewed or biased by what we say to them. 
So that's why we ask, you know, what's the most important issue in your own words? What uh, is, needs the most Im improvement in your own words? Uh, what's the overall satisfaction before we even talk about services? So that's why we start off really big in general and then we get into the specifics. Um, that's sort of the hallmark of a good survey and sort of the, the sort of approach that you have to take. And, and that's what we do. Okay, th thanks, Your Worship. I, I understand the answer. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Giddings. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Quick question in terms of we had the telephone survey as well as the online survey. Could you just take me through the correlation between the two of them? Um, so what we did prior to this year's survey is we undertook a, a pre-survey consultation. Um, something that was a more broadly qualitative, in your own kind of words, exercise um, that we invited uh, residents of the town to participate um, through the idea forum, uh, through the town website, uh, and through other media. They were invited to partake and, and tell us what was important to them in their own words, what we needed to focus on. Uh, this was a largely qualitative exercise, as I mentioned. Um, we don't take the, the 1 to 10 scale ratings. Uh, we don't consider this to be uh, something that can attach a margin of error to. Um, so as compared to the, the quantitative survey, the, the telephone survey, where we do take a, a random sample um, of, of Oakville residents, call 800 of them and ask them the, the same series of questions, um, where we have the metrics with the 1 to 10 scales, as well as uh, some of the, the more qualitative questions uh, in your own words. I, I appreciate that. I guess the difficulty is uh, one is a push versus a pull in terms of getting the respondents. Uh, we have 800 in the uh, telephone random survey and 581 in the other. Look, is it the, through the idea forum? Um, through the idea forum, my recollection is that we had. Some I'm sorry. Total points. votes, uh, areas that they that they expressed interest on. Uh, in I can't speak to what they've actually said in idea forum. Our pre-survey consultation that that we invited people to was um, about five questions, and we had what was it, thirty something responses? Yeah, yeah, yeah something, something of that nature. It, it was much smaller. Um, Jane, can you speak to idea forum? In idea form, each person who participates can vote up to 10 times, so it's not, it's, wow. it's uh, and not everybody does cast their 10 votes, so we had 109 people register to participate in the specific idea form. It's still ongoing, actually. We're going to leave it uh, going, uh, well, forever, I think, just because it is a, a good way to engage uh, the residents in dialogue. So we keep, the we keep the results separate, so what you're seeing from the telephone survey are just the telephone survey, so there isn't, I mean, these are statistically valid. Mm -hmm. now, I appreciate that, and the difference is when you give people an opportunity to provide feedback versus the random digit dialing. Uh, Would we look at the idea form as a way of possibly changing or revising the questions for the random survey in the future if the, enough uh, if there are enough questions or items of interest? Yes, part of the reason that we do the, the pre-survey consultation and, and that we work with the town representatives to construct the survey is so that we make sure that the survey instrument, the questions that we're asking, uh, are most relevant uh, in, in the year that we're asking them. Uh, so if there is a, a particular um, push point or, or note of you know, a sore point or, or something of that nature, whether or not it's something that we just pay attention to or whether we ask a specific question about it, um, those qualitative findings do inform how we design the survey. Thank you. And last question. In terms of, uh, you mentioned clear and present interest in their community. Uh, if you look at our level of engagement, how does that compare to other communities? Because looking at the hard number, it doesn't seem like a very strong number. Just comments uh, on that? Well, when we look at, um, you may be referring to the, the battery of engagement questions that we asked later in the survey. Um, those questions were very active questions. Um, it wasn't just reading the newspaper or talking to your neighbors. It was actually getting involved, being a member of a BIA or sitting on the board of, of an association, actually working and volunteering your time as, as, uh, as an engaged citizen. 
so when we look at engagement questions of that nature, we tend to see a lower, um, what some scholars refer to as a civic core. We see that as a, as a smaller group than the broader engagement questions, reading the front section of a daily newspaper, um, talking with your neighbors about political issues, that sort of thing. Um, those cadres are, are two different sizes, uh, and they're not entirely overlapping groups. So what we see here uh, in, in these results doesn't reflect a population that is disengaged by any means. Um, this is about what we would expect, um, I mean, if a little smaller. Um, but when we look at the issues that are coming forward in terms of most important issue, in terms of livability, in terms of other responses that we get to this survey, um, the issues and responses that are coming up are, are present, they are relevant. Um, and when there is a specific hot point, such as taxes, such as um, other mm. issues that have come up in the news, um, there, are, uh, there is a, a, a strong and an active response to that that we hear over the phone. Thank you, Councillor Giddings. Councillor DeMoff. Thank you very much for this. The, um, the question you asked about how do you get your information from the town, and I think I asked this the last time you brought it, one of them is let's talk Oakville. Is that how you ask them, or do you say the newsletter? Because there may, people may recognize that they get a newsletter from the town, but they don't know what it's called. So I'm just wondering when you ask that question, how you phrase it. Um, so it's, uh, this is called a semi-open end. So we have um, a list of, of four or five, and it's through the website. Um, through uh, the newsletter, in person, etc. cetera. Um, this is not a, a red list, so they tell us where they've heard it. Um, so Let's Talk Oakville is, is a specific code. So if they say Let's Talk Oakville, it gets checked off. Um, and if they say newsletter, then it goes in the newsletter box. And then my other question on, when you, um go through the interview schedule, and in 2009, there's a whole bunch that say less than 1%. Is that because it was not on the uh, questions that were asked then? Or the, yeah, if it's less than 1% for the entire question, that's because it wasn't asked in 2009. How did you come up with what to include in those breakdown categories? So when you say, you know, thinking about Oakville's community facilities and attractions, how did you come up with what the options would be? That wasn't open-ended. You, no. you, so how did you come up with what you would be specifically asking there? Um, those questions and the response options there were developed in consultation with the town staff. And I guess that goes to my last question was, um, you added the question about Oakville Gallery this year, and I'm just wondering why um, Oakville Gallery was chosen over many of the other facilities that the town has. Uh, through you, uh, Mayor Burton, that was actually at my request. Uh, there are certain things that we are going on with the galleries. They're looking at future expansion. They're also looking at their business plan, and I felt it important to what degree is the local community engaged and, and visiting the facility. So it was at my request. But have we ever looked at any other facilities to be able to compare um, the galleries to the library or the museum or QE Park or any of our other facilities so we know whether that's common with our other facilities or not? At this point in time, this is the first time I believe that we've asked about a specific facility, so that's something we can look at in the future. I would think it would be hard to, and maybe you've run into this in other communities, but I mean, I don't know whether um, the fact how many people use a facility and how those numbers compare when it's one isolated um, town-owned facility that we're looking at. Uh, through you, Mayor Brown, I really wasn't looking at it for a comparable just to see how engaged Oakville itself and its citizens were with the galleries. I guess that's what I'm saying. We don't yeah. know how engaged they are because we've never done a survey to see that's how engaged they are in the Oakville Museum or how engaged correct. they are at QE Park. So we really don't know whether that's, we have nothing to compare it to. So no, that's it's not benchmark against others, no. And, uh, that's all, thank you. Through you, um, Mr. Mayor, when we look at the questions, when you're looking at those categories, obviously we're trying to align it with council's strategic priorities, so that's why you, you see those areas that we've identified. And we do in each survey, we have usually identified uh, an issue that might be more relevant or we, that we need more information on that we may not track over time. So this year it may have been the galleries as a, 
we just wanted a little more insight into to the galleries. Uh, in previous years, we've done uh, specific questions around Oakville Transit. Um, so there just may be topical issues that we're also looking into. So those are almost sort of specific questions that we have. Uh, it just gives us additional information. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Kahn. Thank you very much. You, you said earlier something about um, the average being 75%, whereas Oakville scored uh, 87%. Is that average uh, Ontario-wide, Canada-wide, or just uh, municipalities that have a 10-year firm? Uh, that's, you know, that's not a firm number. I say uh, general, uh, based on my experience, I've been doing this for 15 years and I've done well over 20 municipalities. And I would say that the average overall is around 75% uh, in Ontario. Um, so we see above, we see below. In the 905, we can see higher, uh, particularly in similar um, towns to Oakville, we can see higher scores. Um, but this is definitely one of the best scores I've seen. Um, and and, and it, in municipalities of a comparable socioeconomic and demographic uh, setting. I have a question about your uh, methodology. Um, you talk a little bit about you know, being a random sample. And this is always a concern because obviously people who participate in these types of surveys are a subsect of the population. How do you... How do you um, uh, great for that, the fact that you know that there's going to be a particular type of person that's willing to participate? Well, uh, you know, in our industry, we've got a lot of research on research about this. Um, so what we do is it is just, you know, it's everybody who has a phone or a cell phone uh, can be contacted to, to do this survey. Um, so we just randomly dial. Uh, so the science behind this says that if we do this right, we do a random sample, uh, that the result will be a representative sample of your community, and uh, it'll be accurate within a certain margin of error. Um, now, there have been research studies where they've tried to increase the response rate uh, to something that's quite, quite high uh, through the use of offering money uh, from really encouraging people to take part. And what they've actually seen in those studies is that the results have come in virtually identical. Um, so the research on research really supports the reliability of these surveys. And so does the consistency over time. The fact that we can do this survey every two years and your results are quite consistent speaks to that as well. Thank you. Just one last question. You said that you also weighed um, age and gender. Mm -hmm. How does that play in with uh, satisfaction with uh, the people of Oakville? I guess what I'm saying is, is there a particular demographics or age group that's more satisfied or as opposed to less satisfied or, or is it equal uh, uh, between genders? That's a good question. Um, that's something that um, is is available on the cross tabs, and and without going into uh, specific detail, without um, having the numbers right in front of me, um, that's that's what I would refer you to is is the specific cross tabs for those questions. Um, when we look at uh, the presentation of of the results in the report, we look for things that are statistically significant. Um, so that is um, where there are differences between groups. Are they of um, a substantial enough nature um, that we would consider these to be um, statistically reliable differences, uh, as opposed to something that you may have heard me use the term marginal, uh, small enough that it could be incidental. Um, but I will refer you to, to the cross tabs, and, and my understanding is that they, they will be available to you. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Elgar. Yes, uh, sorry. I was going to ask you how the Polaris study went for Toronto, but I, I, <laughs> I, I actually, I, I don't have a question for, for the uh, presenters. I have a question for staff, and it's related to the report itself, which is everything, what I'm interested in by ward is what is st st statistically significant. And I'm wondering if we could receive the report, both hard copy and an electronic copy, and when we would get at the cross tabs. We will uh, send it out electronically, and then we'll make a hard copy available. I mean, it's it's really a lot of data, so I didn't want to make copies uh, for those people. If you you know you weren't everybody wouldn't be interested in that level of detail. So we do make a copy available for anyone in the clerk's office, and we'll send it to you electronically because it's probably an easier uh, way to view the data. When are we when we would we get that electronically? I will send it out tomorrow. For you. Thank you. I appreciate that because that's really helpful when you start drilling down. Thank you. Councillor Giddings. 
Thank you. In terms of <clears throat> getting the data with the with the cross tabs, having spent a career with that kind of data, I take it we're going to see flags coming up in terms of sample size for some of the issues? Yeah, that's right. So as soon as you get below your 800, which is a very solid sample size and, and a very high uh, degree of statistical reliability, once you get down to your wards, um, I believe your wards are around 200 per ward or 150 per ward, uh, then you're getting into margins of error of plus or minus uh, 6.9 to plus or minus get, getting close to 9.8 if you have a, a, a sample size of 100. Um, so you, that's just something to bear in mind, that the margin of error is, is larger once you look at your ward by ward data. Uh, what we've made sure to do is put these quotas on there so that the wards are comparable. They're statistically comparable, because they're all roughly the same. Um, but just keep that in mind, that the margin of error is, is, uh, is higher. I appreciate that. And for staff, I'm just curious in terms of, uh, Councillor Elgar mentioned the uh, availability of the stats by ward. Is that available f for the online forum data or feedback as well? For you, uh, Mr. Mayor, that's actually a good question. I would have to see if we collected it by uh, ward. I'm not sure of the, uh, for people signing up. I don't believe they have to identify by ward, but I'll look into it. Just curious, because there were some, uh, some major variances in terms of some of the questions uh, compared to the Polari research. And last question, in terms of the, uh, is there a comment in terms of the timing of the poll compared to the service Oakville enhancements in terms of the changes? Could that have affected some of it or? Um, through you, Mr. Mayor, I actually, I do, in terms of finding um, the right person, we did see a significant increase from the 2011 survey um, in, in terms of uh, that particular number around customer service. So I think that's part of a, a longer term program we've had to, to enhance the uh, customer service experience. So I do think those results, um, you know, we did see them this year. We tend to conduct the survey, I mean, we always conduct it in that sort of February to March uh, time period, or we have at least for the last uh, three surveys. It just happened to be a lot uh, uh, colder <laughs> this year than it was uh, the, in the previous survey. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, it was most, in, most enlightening and, uh, and uh, somewhat enjoyable, I have to confess. So <laughs> thank you very much. Councillor Robinson? I'm prepared to give you a motion to accept the report. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Robinson moves receipt. All those, uh, I need a seconder. Councillor Kahn, all in favor? Opposed to any? That's adopted. Thank you. Um, we have no uh, other discussion items, and you have your information items, which have been circulated electronically, and your status of outstanding issues is attached. Um, do any of you have any new business for Council tonight? Well, if you don't, I do. <coughs> Um, uh, council, tonight is the last council meeting for Commissioner Dave Bloomer, and uh, as you know, <laughs> as you know from his amazing performance uh, over the last 34 years, um, he's an extremely competent and professional man who doesn't like the limelight is probably going to be mad at me for this. And, uh, uh, but, but nevertheless, it needs saying that he has dedicated his considerable skill and passion to the service of our town for 34 years with great distinction. And, um, and I just want to say that after a career of achievement like you've had and contribution like you've had to our town, you deserve a long and happy retirement and I hope that if anybody gets in your way, you'll call us. We'll come deal with them for you. <laughs> Thank you very much. <clears throat> I think that means we really mean it. <laughs> Thank you, David, for your service. Um, I think now, if there are any uh, regional reports or questions for town boards and commissions, then I'll look for a uh, mover and seconder for the bylaws. Councillor Johnston, Councillor Knoll, thank you. 
This is uh, for bylaws 2013-26, uh, uh, 28, 36, and 46 as uh, shown in the agenda. All those in favor? Opposed if any. The bylaws are adopted. That completes our agenda. Uh, thank you very much for your time and attention. It's been terrific working with you tonight, and uh, we are adjourned.